Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day to save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. Hello, I'm the Dark Master, and for this holiday season, I've decided to do a nature documentary on the island that bears the name of this holiday, specifically the endemic crustaceans, one species of which has become rather famous due to their massive migrations that have inspired many documentaries and memes. But I wish to go further than just that species, which often hogs the spotlight. So now, join me as we go on a tropical Christmas vacation and unwrap a present of knowledge. Let us start with some starter context. Christmas Island history starts approximately 60 million years ago, shortly after the extinction of the non-avian dinosaurs when a seamount rose via a larger m amount of volcanic activity caused a basalt island to relatively rapidly rise over 16,400 feet. Of course, due to erosion, the tallest peak at is nowadays Murray Hill, which is only about 1,180 feet in height, and its total size is only about 52 square miles. Most of the coasts are rather steep cliffs, serving as a barrier for easy entry. This, combined with its relatively stable tropical climate, has allowed for an isolated environment for many endemic lineages, both recent and in some cases dating back to the end of the Mesozoic. Indeed, it wouldn't be until 1615 when this uninhabited island was seen by a European, specifically by the captain Richard Rao. It would be given a name by the English sea captain William Minor, who named it on Christmas Day 1643. Indeed, it would not be until 1887 for the first extensive exploration, and it wasn't until 1899 that the first permanent settlements, which was based on a phosphate mine, was made, so it's been isolated for a long time. Due to this greatly delayed settlement and a low population even to this day, there is still a large number of native flora and fauna, though yes, there have been some negative effects which we shall cover when they become relevant. Without further ado, however, let's start talking about what you're interested in, the crabs themselves. Though, ironically, the first group of quote-unquote crabs are not actually crabs, but let's get into it. Okay, so hermit crabs belong to the crustacean infraorder Anomura, which is the sister group to the f group that contains true crabs, Brachyurna. It can be often hard to tell the difference between the groups, as among Anomurans, there's been multiple lineages that have converged on the body plan of true crabs in a process called carnization. Well-known examples include king crabs, porcelain crabs, and, well, the hairy stone crab. Frankly, I could make a whole video on the subject of carnization, but luckily for us, on Christmas Island, the two groups are very easy to distinguish. None of them have really converged in any significant degree, except maybe the coconut crab, but even then it's pretty obvious that it's not a true crab. Also, for one last clarification, for this video I shall be discussing those crabs and hermit crabs that are primarily land-dwelling or freshwater-dwelling. There are an additional 
nine hermit crab species and 160 true crab species found in the surrounding reefs. I will not be discussing them in this video because one, there are so many of them I couldn't possibly give them justice and they're not really endemic to the island. Without further ado, however, let us talk with these hermit crabs. There are a total of four species divided among two genera, Coenobita and Burgus, which are themselves the only two genera of the family Coenobitidae, better known as the terrestrial hermit crabs. Coenobita, the larger of the two genera, contains a total of 17 species globally, three of which are known from Christmas Island. First and most common are the tawny hermit crab, Coenobita rugosus, which grows to an average of 0.59 inches in length. Despite its name, the color of the species can actually vary. While yes, the most common morph is a tannish brown, others have been absorbed being black, white, blue, and even bright pink in coloration. Much more consistent traits to identify the species is their eyes, which are sandy in overall coloration and may have a brown stripe on the bottom. And unlike the other species on the island, they have stitch marks on their larger pinchers. Much like all species, they live as scavengers and are commonly seen feeding along the strand line on beaches, but can be found further inland as long as they remain moist. The next species is known as the Indo-Hermit Crab, a Coenobita brevimanus. It is the second largest hermit crab on the island, growing 8 inches long and weighing up to half a pound. Their coloration is a lighter gray while young, but as adults they become a darker brownish red with violet coloration on their legs. They are also the most terrestrial species, with specimens found over 328 feet away from the ocean. Despite this, they can still get desiccated quite easily and thus wear shells that they fill with fresh water and spend most of their time in burrows, especially when they molt every 18 months or so. The third species, the strawberry hermit crab, Coenobita perlatus, is perhaps the most famous, for the species has bright orange or reddish coloration that resembles a strawberry. Due to this bright coloration, it has become a popular pet and has a much more research into its ecology than other species. Though, I should stress that they're not exactly the best pets, as they can be quite finicky. But if you're willing to put in the effort, I guess you could theoretically take good care of them. For example, in terms of their ecology, the shells of this species, in addition to serving as a method for protection from predators and desiccation, also serve as a place for females to hold their eggs for a period of time while they're developing, though they are eventually released into the sea. In addition, this species is a prominent scavenger to such an extent that they are thought to be the reason on some other islands that there are, are so few carrion flies, like Christmas Island, though there are other species that also play into it. They also feed upon the invasive giant African land snail, preventing its spread onto the island. Overall, however, the greatest of the hermit crabs on both this island and the world is the coconut crab, Burgus latro, the only member of its genus. Also known as the robber crab, it is not only the largest hermit crab, but also the largest terrestrial arthropod, growing to a maximum size of 16 inches and a weight of 9 pounds. While young, they behave much like other hermit crabs, wearing shells, or in some cases, uh, empty coconut shells, and returning to land. However, upon reaching a certain size, they no longer do so, and harden their shells. Indeed, they are considered one of the most terrestrially adapted crustaceans in the world, and will even drown if submerged for a long period of time. Colors can range from orangish red to purplish blue, and different populations can have different proportions of these colors. Despite its name, the Coconuts are not actually a significant part of the coconut crab's diet, even though they will consume them alongside other types of fruit, seeds, carrion, 
other smaller crabs, both different species like the Christmas Island crabs and just younger members of their own species, turtle hatchlings, Polynesian rats, and even large birds have been absorbed being eaten by the crab. Christmas Island has the largest and densest population in the world, and one that, while not its own species, is considered genetically distinct from those in the West Pacific. Sadly, not all is well, as even on the isolated Christmas island, the arrival of humans has brought new threats, including yellow crazy ants, which hunt the younger members of the species, and hundreds are killed by cars each year, which is bad as it further strains the population. Despite this, Christmas Island still has a large healthy population, especially compared to other places like Madagascar, which they have been exterminated from entirely. While not a true crab, the coconut crab truly deserves its name and fame as one of the big three from Christmas Island. Now, however, let us leave these fake crabs behind and go on to the much larger topic that is true crabs. Before I start with this group, I think a little taxonomy is needed. True crabs, aka brachyurans, are divided into 38 living superfamilies, of which two are represented on the island. The Grapsoidae, which contains a majority of the crabs of Christmas Island, and will be discussed later, and the other superfamily, Theocycopodia, is represented on this island. Christmas Island by the family Onycopodidae, better known as the ghost crabs, specifically the genus Ocipodae, the true ghost crabs. This genus Ocipodae contains 21 species from throughout the tropical and subtropical beaches of the world. Christmas Island has four found on its small beaches. The most common of these four species is the horned ghost crab, Ocupodi ceratophthalmus, also called the horn-eyed ghost crab due to its horn-like projections on this eyes. And while it is the only one on this island to have this feature and thus easy to distinguish, it must be stressed that this trait is also seen in six other species. Luckily, there isn't really an issue here, as on the island, it's the only one with these traits. The diagnostic traits for the species are instead far more obscure, as the outer sheaths of their eyes are broadly triangular. It grows to a size of 2.4 to 3.1 inches in the carapace. By the way, when you're measuring a true crabs, what we're actually talking about is the carapace size. This is because legs can be damaged and thus are not representative of the actual size of the animal. Regardless, this species, given its large range, is fairly representative of all ghost crabs. It serves as a voracious predator of smaller animals like isopods, worms, prawns, sea cucumbers, and other smaller crabs. It will also scavenge on dead matter, especially along the ridge left behind by high tidal waves. They will also filter sand pellets to gleam organic matter from it. They build tunnels from which they spend time when it's particularly hot, and they can be either clockwise or counterclockwise. Ghost crabs create stridulations to warn off intruders and attract mates. And when faced with predators, they will at first try to intimidate them by looking bigger than they actually are. But if that doesn't work, they can run six feet a second, which is pretty fast. The remaining three species are less well known. The smooth-handed ghost crab, Ocupodi cordimanus, is smaller, growing 1.7 inches long in the carapace and generally has a translucent cream color and is distinguished by the inner part of their claws are smoother than the other species. It can in certain places outnumber the other species, but this is not consistent enough. 
Cools! Ghost crab, Occupodi cooli, is a much rarer species. It's around the same size as the smooth-handed ghost crab, but can be easily separated by its broader body and differently portioned eyes and limbs. Plus, the claws are not as smooth as that of the previous species. The Chinese ghost crab, Occupodi siniensis, is the rarest seen and the smallest of the ghost crab species on Christmas Island, only barely surpassing an inch in size. It's also reddish in overall coloration. Overall, while perhaps the mo not the most impressive or diverse grouping of crabs, ghost crabs offer a unique subsection of of Christmas Island's fauna that is interesting of note. Now, let us go on to the more diverse superfamily, the Grapsoidae. The Grapsioidae are represented on Christmas Island by four families, the Varunidae, the Sesamidae, the Geocaridae, and the most diverse Grapsidae, which is the subject of this chapter in the video. There are a total of seven species and three genera. The most common and land adapted of these genera are Geograpsis, better known as the Nippers. So let's start there. The Yellow Nipper, Geograpsis Crinepsis, True to its name is a subdued yellowish tone, though individuals can be a more olive greenish color. It is the largest of the three species found on the island, grown to a maximum carapace size of 2.36 inches. The most active of the three during the day, they are found from the beaches to as much as 50 meters above upon the terraces and the sea cliffs. The little nipper, Geograpsis grayi, is actually the middle size of the three, growing a carapace that's only 1.3 inches long. Despite this, it is the most terrestrial, being found further inland compared to the other two species. In terms of coloration, they usually have a dark blackish purple top half of the body, while the underside is usually a paler whitish coloration. The red nipper, Geographus stormy, is the smallest nipper species, having a carapace size of usually less than 1.1 inches long. It can be distinguished from other nippers on Christmas Island by an orangish red body, hairy legs, and distinctively blue eyes. They are the most aquatic and secretive of the three species spending the days underneath rocks and in crevices. Very shy, they only emerge at night to feed, and rarely go beyond 16 feet from water. Now let us go to the closely related genus Grapsis, better known as lightfoot crabs, which have eight species throughout the tropical waters of the world, three of which are found on Christmas Island. The most common of these three species is the Natal lightfoot crab, Grapsis tenucristatus. It is a reasonably sized species that has a carapace size of 2.75 inches and is a flat disc-like shape, which allows them to enter cracks in rocky beaches when approached by predators or what they perceive as predators like as humans. In terms of coloration, they can range from dark greenish blue to brownish in overall coloration. The legs, claws, and faces are reddish, and when they die or shed their shells, their entire body becomes reddish. They are primarily herbivorous, but like most crabs, they will opportunistically feed on other crustaceans and fish when given the opportunity. The mottled lightfoot crab, Grapsis albolimbidus, is a bit smaller at 2.3 inches in carapace length. It can be distinguished by the mottling on the legs resembling stripes. Claws are also generally more mauve in coloration. Mostly active at night, it behaves and frankly looks a lot like the previous species, being a skittish animal that flees at the slightest danger. 
The intermediate lightfoot crab, Grapsus intermedius, is, well, yet again, another very similar species, intermediate between the other two, and is very uncommon. In general, it has an overall grayish-white appearance with chestnut-brown splotches, and like the other two, is skittish, and combined with its rarity means few ever see it. The remaining genera are all represented by one species each on Christmas Island. The pleated rock crab, Pachygrapsus plicatus, is a rather small species which grows to a carapace length of 0.7 inches. Variable in overall coloration, ranging from a dirty white to black with olive markings. It's commonly found along the rocky shores at the water's edge. Otherwise, little is known about this small species, except that it is a generalized omnivore. Now let's go to the family Cesarmidae, better known as the marsh crabs. The Cesarmidae, better known as marsh crabs, have a total of four genera, each with one species. As a group, they were formerly classified as the Grapesidae, and thus resemble them in many ways, and can only be told apart by several obscure details that are beyond the scope of this video. Without further ado, let us start the marble crab, Metasarsarma obesum, also known as the marble abatic crab. They are known to dwell in brackish water and have a robust square-shaped carapace that usually is around 0.78 inches in total size. The color is highly variable and it normally dwells under rocks and other debris at the top of beaches and other areas, up to 16 feet away from water. Jackson's crab Cartstama jacksoni is named after a certain president and is unique for dwelling primarily within the karst areas of the island and prefers moist, cool areas up to 164 feet away from the ocean. It is notable for the, these long, spidery legs, a dark reddish coloration, and a carapace that is under an inch in total size. Otherwise, it's relatively standard, being a generalized omnivore. The sandy rubble crab, Cyclograpsis integer, is another small species of crab often found in coral and sandy rubble on the beaches of Christmas Island. It is hard to see due to its secretive nature and highly obscure coloration, and thus little is known of it outside of its size, which is less than 0.7 inches in total carapace length. Garfunkel's crab, Danarma garfunki, is also called the yellow-eyed crab. It has a somewhat interesting taxonomic history, frankly. Originally lumped under the species Daharma obstudnifrans, it was revealed that it was actually a species complex and the Christmas Island population was elevated into its own endemic species. And yes, it is named after the noted American singer, actor, and poet, Art Garfunkel, who had a song, Bright Eyes, for the 1978 gruesome animated film, Watership Down. Like the rabbits in that film, this crab is known to live in tunnels and has shining yellow eyes that strongly contrast with an otherwise beautiful indigo blue coloration. The last member of the family and the rarest of all the crab species on Christmas Island is the white striped crab, Labuanium vitatum. This crab has a genuinely brownish coloration as well as some strikingly purple claws with a white line on them. Very rare, this species was last scientifically collected in 1989 and was not seen again until 2013 when it was photographed by a man named Chris Bray on a photography safari. The reason for this rarity is due to the introduction of yellow crazy ants, which have impacted this species 
even more than the other crabs due to its preference for trunks and leaves of coastal vegetation high on the limestone, a place that the ants also prefer to live in. It is believed to not be fully extinct, but it is on the precipice, and the future of that species is uncertain. On that slightly depressing note, let us go on to the family of crabs that Christmas Island is most famous for, the Gekarsinidae, aka the land crabs. This family, outside the coconut crabs, are the most terrestrially adapted crabs on the island, and among the world, though there are other land crabs that are not in this family. There are a total of seven genera widely distributed throughout the Indo-Pacific region, four of which, containing seven species in total, are known from Christmas Island. So, let's start covering them now, starting with arguably the least impressive and moving our way up. The brown crab, Epigrapsis politis, is the only member of its genus on the island and is one of the smaller species, with a carapace that is 0.7 inches in overall size. True to its name, it's a rather drab coloration, being a dark brown to light brown. Males may have one of their claws slightly larger than the other. It is also the least terrestrial of the group, rarely going more than 16 feet from fresh water. While perhaps one of the least exciting of the group, it does have a sort of charm as it represents what is considered the basal condition of the clade, physically speaking at least. The genus Discoplax used to contain many of the species on the island, but it has since been whittled down to only one species that is found on the island, that being the Rugos land crab, Discoplax rotunda, which is so named for the numerous bumps and knobs on the carapace that give it a very Rugos texture, hence the name. In terms of coloration, it's rather cryptic, being an overall black or brownish with paler cream coloration at the claw tips and a reddish brown coloration at the tip of their legs. It is a pretty large crab, though, with a carapace that is 3.1 inches wide. In terms of lifestyle, it lives far inland, beyond the ocean, digging shallow burrows in areas with thick vegetation. Very con timid compared to other species, it is particularly common around the blowholes of Christmas Island and just prefers to stay out of sight due to its nature of being very easily scared. The genus Turkiana contains species formerly placed in the previous genus, and has two species on the island. First and less well known is the orange-legged crab, Turkiana magnum, which is a large species that grows 3.54 inches in carapace size. Their names come from the crab's legs, which can vary from light orange to cinnabar red and are covered with short, thick, hair-like structures. Though juveniles lack the prominent leg coloration and are more bluish-green, which makes sense given its close relationship to the other species that we will get to in a little bit. In terms of habitat, the species is mostly found in drier habitats and other crab species, often far from surface water or seepages, and their burrows are often dug next to boulders and within the more famous blue crab relative colonies. Speaking of which, the Christmas Island blue crabs, Turkiana celesti, was, despite its fame, not found to be its own separate species until 2012. True to its name, the coloration of the species is a whitish blue and gr can grow to a size of 6.29 inches. In 
They are very common along freshwater flows and seepages, which they need in order to thrive. They live there among the muddy banks, feeding on fallen fruit and leaves. Due to these factors, it is restricted to the Dales region of Christmas Island. It was hunted by humans for food in the 1950s, but that has luckily stopped as their beauty was appreciated by the natives more. Unfortunately, then the yellow crazy ants arrived and, well, killed a lot of them. But now we go on to the fourth and final genus of the family, Geocaroidae. This contains three species, the first two of which are strangely possessing the same name, that being the Christmas Island purple crab, Geocaroidae humeri and Geocaroidae lalandi. This is because the two were formerly considered the same species, until a reinvestigation of genetic and morphological data saw the two separated. Still, the two are rather similar in terms of ecology and appearance. Geocaracoidae humeri is the most common of the two. It is lighter in coloration and is smaller at an average size of 5.9 inches of carapace length. The second, Geocaracoidea lalandi, is much rarer, darker in overcoloration, and is slightly larger with an average of 6.29 inches in overall size. But it is the third species that has brought fame to Christmas Island, that being the Christmas Island red crab, Geocarcoidae natalis. In terms of basic description, it's actually one of the smaller species, averaging about 4.6 inches in carapace size, though exceptional specimens can reach 4.7 inches. There is some sexual dimorphism as males are generally larger, while females have smaller claws and broader abdomens. Their coloration is obviously mostly bright red, but occasionally orange and purple individuals can be found. They are the most common crab species on the island, with their numbers believed to have been at their peak, numbering 120 million individuals, which is such a number, it is this species whose ecology is the most documented on the island, and given its sheer number, it really does have an impact on the island. They are found throughout the island, though their preference is for wetter habitats, especially tall rainforests set upon deep soil from which they can dig literally hundreds of tunnels, which they sleep in at night due to them being diurnal. If they can't burrow, they will live in the deepest of rock crevices. This helps them maintain their moisture levels that are needed for their survival. In fact, the only places where they won't really live are places that have been mined, but that's understandable. Their diet consists of fallen fruit, leaves, flowers, new seedlings, with both fresh and rotten of both being consumed. They are not pure herbivores, however, and most like other crabs will readily feed on human refuse, dead crabs, birds, and even the introduced giant African snail, preventing the invasive species from getting bad on the island. All this burrowing and consumption means that red crabs are keystone species, aerating the soil and providing nutrients in the form of their dung, helping to maintain the undergrowth by feeding on seeds and seedlings. But even more famous than their ecological impact is the mass migrations they undergo every wet season, usually in October or early November, when millions of red crabs head out down to the shore. Males make tunnels, which they then use to ward off from other males the location, as well as reproduce with females inside of the tunnel after which they quickly return back to the forest as their job is done. Meanwhile, the females remain inside the tunnels for the following two weeks until their eggs are done incubating and then release millions upon millions of babies into the water where they proceed to live for three to four weeks. Assuming they are not eaten by either the manta ray or whale shark, the only surviving natural predators of the red crab after the extinction of Maclear's rat and the bulldog rat, which may have kept red crab populations stable before humans arrived, 
the larva, or as they're called in crustaceans, megalope, will crawl out of the ocean and live the next three years hidden from their larger parents, molting several times a year until maturation, from which point on they will only molt every year for a maximum lifespan of 12 years. Sadly, for as beautiful as these creatures are, humans have negatively impacted them. Though unlike the Christmas Island blue crab, direct consumption is not a cause, as due to their small size and low-quality meat, they're basically inedible to most people. No, the problems faced by red crabs are more direct and indirect. During their migration, many crabs must cross roads. Due to this, many are hit by cars, which can not only cause accidents as their exoskeletons pierce tires and thus could possibly kill people, but far more importantly, thousands of red crabs die being crushed by vehicles. Even worse was the arrival in 1995 of yellow crazy ants, which saw a reduction in the crab's population, along with most other crab species, killing anywhere from 10 to 15 million individuals, reducing their population by one quarter or even one third. Luckily, people have their done their best to mitigate both issues, including building aluminum barriers to funnel crabs to underpasses and crab bridges that allow them to safely travel through areas, and applying a poison that specifically targets that ant species. So the final fate of these crabs is actually rather hopeful, but you might expect that we are done, as we have covered the biggest, most well-known crab species. However, the final family, while not as famous, is just as interesting and will serve as what we leave this episode on. The Varundae is a, another group formerly part of the larger Grabsidae. It contains many genera throughout the world, and Christmas Island, there are three genera, Pseudographus, Varuna, and Orcovita, which contain four total species. First and perhaps least is the little white crab, Pseudograptus albus. True to its name, it is a tiny crab with a maximum carapace size of 0.3 inches long, and its color is generally white, though some specimens have light brown spots. They are commonly found under washed-up coral and rocks along the beach, and they are rarely seen due to their secretive nature and coloration. The paddler crab, Varuna literata, is a larger species with a carapace about 2.3 inches long and is generally a light brown to brownish gray coloration with a yellowish underside and reddish claws. It is often found in brackish water as well as the lands surrounding it. But it is with the last genus that we find not only at the highest diversity on the island, and frankly, the coolest in the family. And they were only discovered in 2012, so they're actually a relatively recent addition to the island's diversity. Hicks cave crab, Orcovita hicksi, and orchards cave crab, Orcovita orchardium, surprisingly are found in the same cave, representing an older branch from a lineage otherwise known from the northwestern Pacific region, likely arriving on Christmas Island around the beginning of the Cenozoic. Both species are rather similar, being a pale tannish to orangish yellow to yellow white. Hicks cave crab grows a small carapace size of 0.98 inches, while orchard cave crab is slightly larger at 1.18 inches. And they like many of the typical cave adaptations, likely due to the fact that these caves often have openings to the outside world, and there is an, an adaptive advantage to being able to move outside of them. Now, at first, these two species might seem fairly boring. However, if we look at those whose 
names the crabs are named after, we can learn some interesting info. Hicks Cave Crab was named after John Hicks, who is an Australian government conservator who helped write the book Christmas Crabs, which helped to publicize the island's unique fauna to the rest of the world for the first time. I was going to try and get that book in order to, you know, research more into this video. However, for some reason, I can't find it for sale anywhere. Like, I find offerings of people selling, like, the hardcover or whatever. But, like, why would I want that? Why would I want, like, the cover of the book and not the actual book itself? And this book, however, despite not being able to find it for myself, did inspire a lot of people, including the researchers who discovered this new species. Orchard Cave Crab is named after Max Orchard, who was the head ranger on Christmas Island and who spearheaded the removal of the yellow crazy ants, potentially saving the mini crabs from utter extinction. He also wrote an amazing book, which served as an invaluable resource while researching for this video, which I'll link in the description down below so you can buy it as well as give this recently deceased man's family some financial support as he's generally an amazing guy and it's a shame that he doesn't get as much attention as he should i hope you enjoyed this video i find christmas island to be a very interesting if underappreciated tropical island yeah i know it's a different subject matter than my usual videos but I've always occasionally done these nature documentaries, especially if you're like an old fan, you'll know that my first video series was the evolution of elephants. And, you know, plus it's Christmas, and what better surprise gift for my subscribers than a video about Christmas Island? Anyway, if you like this video, consider liking and subscribing. I'm the Dark Master. Merry Christmas, and have a happy new year. She'd been drinking too much eggnog. And we begged her not to go. Don't go, Grandma. But she forgot her medication. And she staggered out the door into the snow. When we found her Christmas morning at the scene of the attack. Let me tell you something. She had hoof prints on her forehead and incriminating claws marks on her back. Grandma got run over by a reindeer Walking home from our house Christmas Eve You can say there's no such thing as Santa But as for me and Grandpa, we believe